Hello and welcome to SCF in Studio. I'm Charles Clapsaddle, Station Manager for Manatee Educational Television. And it's our great pleasure to have with us today Dr. Carol Provesfield, the President of the State College of Florida, to talk about the significant successes that State College has had in the past few months. Dr. Prosfield, thank you very much for joining us. It's thank always you. a pleasure to have you with us and to find out what the great things that the State College continues to do for this community. Well, it's a joy to be here and I always like to talk about the things that the State College of Florida is doing, particularly this year. This is a, a hallmark year for us. We have achieved excellence in so many different areas and I look forward to talking about each of them. Well, one of the great successes that you've just had is you've just completed your 2015 spring commencement exercises we were just held at the Van Wazel a uh, short time ago. It's got to be a wonderful experience for you to see the graduates uh, walk across the stage and get their degree. It's a highlight of the year. It truly is. Uh, nothing makes me happier than to be able to watch students walk across the stage. You hear their family and their support systems that are out there cheering them on and typically the big smile will come across their face as they're headed my way and just being able to tell them, good job, well done, go off and do great things, it's, it's a joy. It, I mean, fortunately, uh, METV has been you know, taping the graduations for, for many years now. But you know, when you see the, the, the diversity of your students, young, old, male, female, black, white, Hispanic, all walking across, you know, getting that, that achievement you know, from the State College, it really is a significant thing for this community to see the diversity that the college provides. Well, I think this year we had more graduates in our spring semester than we've ever had before. Mm -hmm. We had more walk than we've ever had before, That's great. Uh, which is a wonderful, wonderful um, thing for the college. Unfortunately, it presents a certain amount of challenge, too, and that is we'll be looking for a place to hold graduation so we can make sure students can invite all the family and friends that they want to have there with them. It, it's a beautiful ceremony and you know each year Dr. Bowman and his staff you know put it together but you know I must say that seeing you uh, you know uh, pose with each of the graduates as you hand them their diploma it's, it's really significant and it really does a great thing for each of those students and for their families as well. Well I enjoyed this year you know, this is my second year as president of the college and I, I knew more students than I've known <laughs> before and so to see those that I've I've watched and I've interacted with whether it's with Brain Bowl or on an athletic program. Um, it's just, for me personally, it's, it's just so touching to see them reach this milestone in their lives and knowing that they're going to go on. And, and you know, we want to talk about you know the, the 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 breadth of what the college offers in just a short time. But I really want to spend a few minutes, if we can, about some of the significant achievements that the college has has done this year. And one of those is the Brain Bowl. And you know, we've done a program about some with some of the participants and, and uh, some of the advisors <laughs> on it. But what a wonderful achievement for the State College to have! Tell us about wh what the Brain Bowl achieved this year. Well, the Brain Bowl was the national champion. National champion. Two-year colleges, and um, they they just set their mind to doing exactly that, and they were able to accomplish it. But then I thought what was really fascinating is because they're the national champions, they get invited to go on and compete against the four-year institutions across the country. And we went into that with um, you know kind of the attitude that we're going to. We're not going to let ourselves be beat just because we're a two-year institution. Absolutely. We're going in with the attitude that we, we earned the right to be there. And the students, I think one of the students said on, on the METV program, we're not going to let them beat us just because they went to a more expensive school than we did. <laughs> and they didn't. And I was so proud. I was following them. I couldn't be there in person, but I was following them every step of the way. On uh, We were texting back and forth. Uh, the coaches and I were telling me they just played this team. They just beat this team. And I was just, 
I was inspired, and when it's, they said they were going to be playing in the bracket uh, against Duke, I said, well, if you mm. beat Duke, I'm taking everybody out to steak dinner. There you go. <laughs> and they beat and Duke. sure enough. <laughs> <laughs> they beat Duke, and they beat Cal Berkeley. They ah. beat Claremont. They beat the University of Alabama. And we ended up with a record, a win-loss record, that was better than UF. We never got wow. to play UF, but we had a better win-loss record than they did. But, I mean, what a significant achievement, you know, for the, for the team members and for their advisors as well. But, you know, I think, it just, as importantly, it just shows the caliber of the students and the caliber of the instruction and the caliber of your faculty that kind of inspires those students uh, to succeed and, and to persevere. I mean, those are pretty big schools that one competes against, but, you know, SEF, you know, rose to the challenge and, and significantly uh, uh, got got a wonderful uh, uh, recognition. Well, I think it just goes to show what can be done when you have faculty members that inspire and motivate students and push them to be the best that they can be, and students who want to rise to that challenge. Mm -hmm. It was just the perfect chemistry this year. We have one member of that national championship team who's coming back next year. Go. And I said to him at the honors uh, convocation a few weeks ago, "We're going to do it." again, aren't we? I kind of <laughs> like this winning thing. Yeah. So they're going to be training throughout the summer. We'll see how well they'll be able to do next year. Well, they, you know, you've set a great tradition with that. I mean, they did very well last year. They succeeded so significantly this year. And then you, you, you've set that kind of standard. And I think, you know, both from the faculty advisor standpoint, as well as the student involvement, you can continue to achieve and continue to persevere. But within the Brain Bowl, not only was the team recognized, there was individual recognition uh, for individual students, mm -hmm. as well as the faculty advisor. Is that true? Yes, our faculty advisor was given Coach of the Year Award. Fantastic. Uh, well deserved, I might add. And, and several of the members um, at the state level were players of the year. And even when we played in the four-year tournament, one of our players, I believe, was ranked in the top 25 wow. in the nation. So. Um, we were pretty um, pretty proud of what they were able to accomplish. Again, a great indication of the caliber of students at SEF and what they can achieve. But if that wasn't enough, I mean, also... <laughs> that's you know, just the start. That's just the beginning. <laughs> we're going to be talking about some of these achievements. If that wasn't enough, also the All Florida Academic Team uh, recognized SEF and some of the students there uh, this year as well. Tell us a little bit about that, if you could. Sure. Four of our students were nominated and recognized at the Fl All Florida Academic Team. Uh, three of the four students were from our Venice campus, was their home campus. Fantastic. And our one young lady from the Bradenton campus, you see her name come up again and again and again. She uh, was also recognized recently with the National Science Foundation Award and a grant, and she'll be working with Moat Marine this summer doing some research. Her uh, course of study is biotechnology, and she wants to go on and be a neuroscientist and work on brain uh, injury. I, I think it's fantastic, and you know, to be recognized, have that uh, uh, number of students recognized by all Florida for academic excellence, is another indicator of the success that SEF wants their students to have. Well, and your biotechnology program is fantastic. We've done a couple of things with them. It, it, it's just a wonderful program. Well, I think it's important for the viewing audience to understand that your state colleges, your community colleges are are an interesting animal now. We, we provide the same type of education that we've been providing since we were founded 58 years ago. Right. We're an open access institution, but people are choosing to come to the State College of Florida because of the quality academic program that we have. And I think this year we demonstrated it in spades across <laughs> the board that you, when you come to the State College of Florida, you will be challenged and you can be successful and academically you can be at the top of the game. And, and I think that's a true indicator of the continued success the college has is that academic excellence and that's the one thing that you and your faculty continue to stress and we want to talk about that a little bit later as you continue to grow the programs within the college but we're not quite done <laughs> talking about all the accolades that the college has received this year another major milestone and this is a continuing milestone is the Model UN program and we've done a couple of shows with the Model UN program what a great idea what a great concept but this year your Model UN program again took some significant recognition can you tell us a little bit about that sure uh, well first we have the most incredible faculty advisor in Danny Firstman 
Uh, he is another one of those faculty members that knows how to motivate and inspire students. And you know, he always is one of these people that I'll say, Danny, how are we going to do? And he'll <laughs> say, well, you know, it's really hard to tell. Yeah. I think we're OK. We're well prepared. And then they come back and they win the top awards you can possibly get. We had the outstanding delegation uh, top award that you can get Significant recognition. Significant recognition. And in that, we had outstanding delegate uh, in, in uh, Carlisle Steyer that was competing for our college. We also had outstanding position papers. In the course of uh, a term, the students are researching a particular country. This year mm -hmm. we're China. This mm -hmm. semester we had China. And writing papers about where that country would stand on various issues. And then those papers are submitted as part of this conference. Of our four students who competed, three out of the four had a perfect 100%. <laughs> the other had in the high 90s. So our average was, I think, 98 and change. It was probably that, or maybe 99 and change. The highest average, we believe, in the 25-year history of this conference. So and, and I we think swept it's, it. I think it's a, a wonderful. And we can just mention uh, Carlisle again, because he's a student within the uh, collegiate school. Yes. Is that correct? That's correct. A dual enrolled uh, type of thing. What a remarkable young man and what a tremendous uh, influence that, that he has on the Model UN as well. Oh, I mean, he's the amazing. Enthusiasm and excitement. So he, what a great kid to have with you. Well, he was everywhere. He, he's a dual enrolled, well, actually a collegiate school student of ours. He was on the national championship brain bowl team. He was at the Model UN team. He was the outstanding delegate with the Model UN. He won several awards that were um, awarded by faculty for outstanding student in that subject matter. So he is going to go on and he's going to be, pardon me, he's going to be wildly successful. I believe he said he wants to be president of the United States I, I think States he someday. did. I think he mentioned that. And, you know, I, I, and with all the success, you know, what, what, I wouldn't want to uh, uh, try Don't to discount, uh, him. discount him at all. <laughs> but, you know, these are significant achievements, you know, with just those. But, you know, throughout the course of the year, the State College continues to find those uh, avenues for student success. And another one of those with the Phi Beta Lambda, you know, business students, uh, future business leaders of America conference. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Because I think that in, in itself speaks very well for the college. Sure. This is a club sport, really. And these students are prepared in various business disciplines. And uh, they go and they compete against other institutions at the state and the regional level. And our students always do very well. This year, no surprise, they did very well there. Um, also, uh, I think we took a second place and we took a first place. And, and I think the impromptu speaking is the one that I am just so proud of. Our, our speech faculty are doing a great job preparing students to stand up and address Give audiences. presentations. Right, on a variety of different topics. And, and you know, that is everybody's number one fear mm -hmm. is public speaking. And to be recognized as number one is, is says a lot again about the faculty and the quality of the students and that academic experience. But the one thing that's you know really indicative is that you know it, it's such a broad spectrum of student success within the college. You know whether it's in business leaders or the Brain Bowl or Model UN or for example your math at Olympics team. The, the spectrum is not limited to one certain area where there's student success. You encourage and inspire those students to succeed in all formats across the uh, all the offerings of SCF. Well, if I have any legacy at the State College of Florida, I hope it is around academic success. Uh, to me, it's just as important to go and cheer on these students at their, their brain bowl competition or to support them in their Model exactly. UN as it is to go to a baseball game or a softball game because that's what we're about. That's what's really the the skill and the talent and the ability that's going to carry them for the rest of their lives. And so, you know, I just can't say enough about it. Our, our math Olympic team this year did a, a fine job. I think we came in fourth in the state competition. But I thought what was very exciting is as the only two-year college competing in the in the four-year. Um, category, we took a second place and a fourth place for um, individual student activities. And when one was around um, presentation, a first place in terms of a presentation of mathematics, if you can imagine, <laughs> <laughs> that takes an extra skill to it be does. able to present it well does. and to be talking about mathematics. At the same time. <laughs> but you know, again, it's just indicative of the quality and the caliber, not only of your students, but the faculty as well, you know, to inspire those students to succeed at each and every step. Um, 
if that wasn't enough, you, know, <laughs> you also have a very robust and a very uh, exciting music program uh, at the college, um, and, and you know, led by Robin Bell and Melody Dickerson. I mean, they're wonderful programs that you have there. Tell us a little bit about the music program and how that kind of continues to evolve and, and succeed. Well, the music program this year also was a, a hallmark year for, for that program. Um, it's the fastest growing program we have on campus right now. We've outgrown our space. So hopefully we'll be able to provide um, more practice space and mm -hmm. preparation space. But we had the opportunity with the choir to sing with Susan Boyle and the Van Wezel this year. To How exciting was that? Uh, unbelievable. And, and we were selected amongst every possible choice in, in this area. They selected the State College of Florida Choir. So we were, we were very honored by that. And uh, we, I had asked the uh, music faculty to put on one of the Sunday at Neal performance this year because we sell subscriptions for mm -hmm. people to come in on Sundays and I thought well you know people have been coming for years and I think that we ought to be able to show them what Showcase their, your talent what and their ability. support is is providing and so they put together the Carmina Burana which is the quintessential operetta of the 20th century and I couldn't believe the quality I mean I was a little nervous to think, okay, how well are we going to do this? I listened to it repeatedly online to get my head around what we were going to do. But the minute they heard that, f hit that first note, I knew this was going to be spectacular. And the hair on the back of my neck stood <laughs> up, and I had tears in my eyes. And they, they just nailed it. And that's just what they were able to do on every performance that they put together this year was just uh, knocked it out of the park spectacular and the students are incredible and their individual uh, accomplishments when we went to the winter music symposium mm -hmm. they oh, every year select 16 seats in the all florida orchestra eight of those went to students at the state college now of let's, re let's just reinforce that <laughs> out of 16 seats eight went to the state college of florida Definitely. and i think what a what a great achievement you know next year we'll try to prefer all 16 but, <laughs> But, uh, but what, a, what a remarkable achievement in that. And I must say about the Carmina Barone thing, what a wonderful performance. That was a full chorus, full orchestra, soloist, all under the direction of, of Robin Bell, who mm -hmm. did a magnificent job for it. And the, it was a sold out performance, one time performance yes. only. But what a significant achievement for the college to be able to do that. And what was 165 people on stage, every one of them faculty, staff, or, uh, well, I'm sorry, faculty, students, and some collegiate school students or mm -hmm. alums. Mm -hmm. So every one of them was associated with the music program at the State College of Florida, <laughs> and it was great. just a beautiful thing to see. Uh, and, you know, Robin Bell is to be, you know, really congratulated for the caliber of, of musicians that she has, but also for that inspiration that she provides to those students as well. She does a remarkable well, job. Robin, Melody, Rex, Mark Menino, all of them, it's because of them that students are choosing to come to the State College of Florida because they know they are going to get the kind of uh, training and skill development that's going to take them to the next level. And every one of our students move on and they go into the programs of their choice and we very fortunate that they choose to come back. Uh, it, it's always nice when we have a, um, an event like the Carmina Barana to see students yeah, who have graduated that. who are coming back because they're cheering on their their exactly. fellow classmates and their their uh, folks from their alma mater. And, and the, you know they have a they have a, a affinity you know for for the college itself to be able to participate mm -hmm. that and to see others succeed. And I th I think that's really evident from the people that come back and 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 participate with the college. But throughout the college. Uh, you have programs that have continued to succeed uh, from the very beginning when they, you know, when you brought those to the school, such as your dental hygiene and your nursing program, which are known throughout the states for the quality and the caliber of instruction, but also the success rate uh, for each student. Uh, the dental hygiene program continues to be an exceptional program, as, as does your nursing program. Well, all of our health sciences programs are outstanding. Our radiography program, mm -hmm. our physical therapy, occupational therapy. As a matter of fact, they, all of our programs are accredited. And I think it feels like, anyway, that all of them went through their reaccreditation process this year. It was a, a real um, busy year from that mm -hmm. perspective. And all of our graduates we had a 100% pass rate on their license licensure examination. That's, that's every 100% of our health science programs 100% pass rate. That, that's, that's, that's incredible. A, that, that's it's phenomenal. Top in the nation. 
and, and get that's any top than that. in the nation. It doesn't get any it, better it, than it that. <laughs> and I, I think that's really a significant achievement. And you know, again, you know, credit to the faculty and the staff. You know, being able to uh, instill in those students that that sense of uh, uh, of success. Well, yeah, I think the the proof is in the pudding. If you're somebody and you're in a hospital room and a nurse is coming in to see you, and you hear that that nurse is a graduate of the State College of Florida, I want I want that patient to say. Wonderful. This is exactly the person that I want in here taking care of me. I know if it's me in that room, I want to say, "Are you a Excellent. graduate of the State College of Florida?" And, and you, know, you, you rest <laughs> a little easier then. But you know, the nursing program itself, you know, is, is just wonderful. You have a, a, a state-of-the-art training facility at your Lakewood mm -hmm. Ranch campus. You have, uh, you know, top-of-the-line instructors that are out there. I mean, it's really a wonderful program that kind of generates. Uh, you know, a, a, a lot of people from all over the area, not just locally, but from all over this, the state to come to the state college. Well, it's true, and it, but we don't do it alone. We um, are very fortunate to have a lot of clinical uh, partners where our student nurses and other health science um, students have the opportunity to go and develop their skills, and we just simply couldn't do it without them. Well, it's and you a have community a, effort to create. Well, you that have kind a great faculty yes. as well. You have a wonderful faculty, and I've always had a wonderful faculty in your nursing program as well. But you're right. With throughout your health sciences program, there's continued success, a continued emphasis on providing the best instruction and the best turnover of students in, into these uh, valuable programs. But let's take a moment, if we can. I want to talk about one particular student, if we may, and that's uh, Megan or uh, mm -hmm. Orlando. Orlando and. She's just received a very important uh, research opportunity at Moat Marine, and th this is one of those success stories that, that as the president of college, you, you've got to be very proud of. I, I can't say enough about Megan. I got to know Megan a little bit because she's one of the four all Florida academic um, scholars. Um, she was in our biotech program. She's just a delightful young woman who made some bad choices early in life, um, didn't have a lot of support academically or just personally and when she came to the State College of Florida she told me that her professor Matt Thomas was the first person that ever told her that she was smart and that she could do really well in this in this discipline and she just took that and just blossomed and she's she's the full package she's smart she's got a wonderful personality she's an outstanding mother um, and she's just absolutely committed and dedicated to this profession and what she wants to do as a result she volunteered at Ross camp how she did that while raising a child going to school working and managed to volunteer at the same time I don't know but um, God bless her she's she's just the perfect um, example of the kind of student that we have at the State College of Florida and right. she is going to be remarkably successful I look forward to following her career and, and you know the State College of Florida provided her with that opportunity uh, and, and you know and much like many many other students th uh, throughout your programs you know State College provides that opportunity and students rise to that success because of the input of your faculty because of the support mechanisms that the college has in place to help students succeed and, and I think that's significant you know I had the opportunity to meet with the outstanding graduating students before they um, found out who was the one winner, and every one of them is a winner. But I, I asked them, tell me about a faculty member that you experienced when you were at the State College of Florida that, that was your favorite or that, that was meaningful to you. And every one of them talked about sort of a life-changing experience they had with a faculty member who took a personal interest in them and helped them realize a, a level of success that they didn't know they had in them and you know that makes me feel like you know we have Absolutely. we have faculty that bar none they're passionate about what they do and it goes so far beyond just the classroom and, and it does take you know you know one opportunity for that uh, student to you know to have some interest shown in them to say you can succeed and you can uh, 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 be better at this than anybody before. So I mean, it really does say a lot about your faculty to have that kind of one-on-one -on -one interest. You know you know some universities and stuff you, you have hundreds of people in a class and you don't have that opportunity to have that one-on-one -on -one kind of uh, connection with a faculty. Well, you know, we all have all these different educational opportunities that students have in this in this state, have their um, 
their strengths and their weaknesses and their challenges. And I think that our strength is that we do have faculty that are passionate about teaching. Mm -hmm. They're passionate about the students and seeing those students become successful. They're not worried about researching and publishing, although many of them do. Right. But right. their focus is on that student and that student's success, and it shows. This year it showed quite a bit. And, and, <laughs> and, and it continues to do that. But one of the things also that, that's significant is, you know, class size, too. You don't, you know, you, you have classes that are manageable that, you know, one feels uh, comfortable in. You don't have those mega classes where, you know, you're, you're just a number, uh, uh, like some of the other large universities, and that's just done by necessity as a opposed to you know, trying to find that key element where a, a faculty member and a class connect. And I think that's you know, a key element for the State College, yeah. is to have those small class sizes. Yeah, but you, know, you continue to you know, succeed in so many different levels, you know, academically and student-wise and faculty. But you know, the State College also has a very proud history uh, of athletic success. You know, continued uh, uh, background. You were just recently at the uh, Hall of Fame uh, for mm -hmm. uh, uh, SEF, you know, which is always a great opportunity to recognize those people who have made a contribution. And the athletic department continues to excel. Um, this year, you were placed second in the Suncoast Conference for the uh, baseball, and also in softball as well. But if that wasn't enough, you're also very involved with your tennis activities, which is a, kind of a, a, a recent uh, addition to the to the college. And our tennis team, our women's tennis team, this year were the back-to-back -back state champions for that's the first a, time in I the history of the great. college. So we're very <laughs> proud of them and made their way to the national tournament. As did our volleyball team this year. It had the opportunity to go to the national tournament. Now volleyball had the opportunity to go to Wyoming in December. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, they got to play inside. <laughs> yeah, I, I, don't, I don't think you want to go to Wyoming and decide to play volleyball. But, but hey, I'll it, go any year in December to play volleyball if we're in the <laughs> national championship. I, I think, <laughs> but what a significant achievement for the college to be able to, you know, be recognized in all of their sports activities, you know, for baseball and softball and tennis and volleyball, all of those things where you give an opportunity to the student athletes uh, to be recognized on, you know, both a state and local and national level. But you know what I think is even more fascinating about that is these athletes are also among our top academic performers exactly. as well. The all state academic team um, or athletic academic team, many mm -hmm. of our athletes are part of and recognized nationally for academics. They're the they're also the, the full the full package. They're mm -hmm. they're intelligent and they're good athletes at the same time and, and again that's what we're creating, that full that full person. Uh, many of them right. will go on to pursue an academic uh, or an athletic career, and um, others will not. And mm -hmm. we want to prepare them for whichever choice they choose, you know, whatever avenue they choose. So, but well, but you know, they're also great ambassadors for yes, the school they when they go out, and and just as great an ambassador as the Model UN or the Brain Bowl, but all of the people that represent the State College at, at whatever level, whether it's sports or an academic thing, they, they are singing the praises of the State College of Florida. And they're saying the State College of Florida has provided us this opportunity and they're very supportive of all the efforts that the college continues to provide them. But you, as you move on, you got tennis, you've got the volleyball, you've got some significant things. but. One of the things that I think, and I'd like for you to take a few minutes if you can, is that you know the, the State College has had this, um, that through your leadership and through your uh, vision, is, is kind of an increased involvement in community awareness and community participation. And, and you've done that for several years now. You know, you've been one of the leaders, uh, if not the instigator, for the Martin Luther King Day of Service. And you've also been very heavily involved in embracing our differences. And there's not one event throughout the, the county that you or your staff or your uh, leaders like Dr. Mears or uh, Gary Russell or Dr. Boom don't participate in some manner. And it's very... Um, eye-opening to see the college out there as part of this community giving back. And why is that important to you? Well, to me it's very simple. Uh, we are, at the core of it, a community college. We're here to serve our community. And that means more than just providing outstanding quality um, education and um, music programs and other things. It means that we need to be part of what's going on in our community. Mm -hmm. and. 
it also helps us to be better at that other part of our mission, to know what our community needs, how we can serve our community, what the people in our community are looking for uh, to support their goals and their dreams, so we can be part of that. Um, I just am so proud of everything that we're doing, and, and when it comes to the embracing our differences, we, one of our collegiate school students this year was, her, her submission was selected for one of the big Billboards that and, and are I think up that's really, and, really wonderful. And if anybody yeah. hasn't had an opportunity to see the Embracing Our Differences, which is uh, not only uh, at the Riverwalk, but it will also be available for uh, down at the uh, Sarasota Marina as well. It's a wonderful exhibit to see. And to have a State College of Florida Collegiate School person's uh, image and words up on these huge panels, it, it's got for you, it's got to be really rewarding. Well, it is very rewarding. You know, we've been part of this program almost from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. And over the years, we've had both employees and students who've had their submissions selected for in inclusion in some way or another. But this, I think, is the first time we've had one that's been selected for the big boards. So we're very proud of that. And it always makes me happy when I can go by and I can look <laughs> up and I can see it and I see State College yeah, of Florida State Collegiate College. School. That, it, <laughs> and it does. It's going to make you feel, feel very proud. Uh, but, you know, segueing into the Collegiate School, the Collegiate School can continues to be very successful to earning you know all kinds of accolades you know for their academic accomplishments as well as their community involvement okay. uh, this year they've earned their fourth consecutive a is that correct that's correct every year since we've been founded that's, that's uh, that, that that's fascinating and your head of school there you know continues to uh, provide a, a continued outreach we just did a program this weekend where most of the participants were from the uh, State College of Florida, you know, not most, but, you know, several were from the State College of Florida Collegiate School. And, and, and you could see that their uh, kind of um, enthusiasm and knowledge and outreach was, was very evident. Well, and you see the, this graduating class of our Collegiate School, it's at 9,000? Volunteer hours? That's, that's like, well, unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> but, the, you know, that's, that's part, it's, it's part of the culture, it's part of wh who they are and what their expectations are and they they are just um, an amazing group of people. All 50 of them, as I understand, are going on to college and most of them to the college of their choice. Mm -hmm. uh, I think about half are going to Florida Gulf Coast University, who is right. our partner. And tell us a little bit about that partnership thing because the Florida Gulf Coast is, is, is really a significant partner for the State College of Florida. Since the program was founded, the Florida Gulf Coast University has offered a scholarship to any student who has graduated from our collegiate school with both their high school diploma and their AA degree mm -hmm. to go to Florida Gulf Coast University the next two years tuition free so they can get their baccalaureate degree and graduate with no debt. Is, isn't that a remarkable partnership and I think you know hats off to you and your leadership you know if we're trying to make that really a, an important thing and it's a, kind of a seamless transition you know from the collegiate school to the Florida Gulf Coast and, and it's a wonderful thing for those students and those families you know to have that opportunity. Well, when you think about the the concept when we first opened our collegiate school was to heavily market <clears throat> and and get uh, parents to enter into the lottery from communities right. where they might be first generation exactly. in college students. These are students who may not have ever thought they would have gone to college, or right. parents who never thought their child would have that opportunity, right. who now have the opportunity to go all the way through get their baccalaureate degree without it's remarkable. having to incur any kind of debt. And, and so and it's, it's just such a gift, and I'm so pleased to have Florida Gulf Coast University have a partner. And, and I must say, Dr. Prosville, you know, to have that opportunity, you know, to, to continue to be very supportive and active in, in making that uh, uh, happen is, is really a significant achievement. And, you know, your leadership in having, you know, that kind of continued effort, you know, to help these students succeed and move them into, you know, so they can complete their education is really significant. And hats off to you for that type of program. It's really, it's really a wonderful opportunity, not only for those kids, but also for their families, too, so they don't have to feel that debt uh, hanging over their heads. So, but anyway, let's, I want to move on a little bit. Um, <coughs> with a great opportunity comes great responsibility. 
And as we kind of move into the beginning of June now, you're looking at a legislative session that will be uh, reconvening uh, the beginning of June through, I think, the 20th. Mm -hmm. uh, they're looking at it. And a lot of things were, were left undone because of the situation at, at the legislature. But there are some significant things that the college is looking at uh, as part of the legislative session that you would like to see kind of uh, resolved. So if we can, I'd like to take a few moments to talk about some of those th critical things that sure. are important to the college at, for its continued growth and success and, and you know a lot of things are not going anywhere just simply because there was a bill um, that was proposed about guns on campus and uh, that obviously did not get the committee support um, that it, it, that was anticipated so that bill kind of died uh, 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 in committee so that's one thing less thing that you have to worry about um, but also there's an education bill, uh, and I believe it's Senate Bill 948, which mm -hmm. is a massive education thing. Uh, what's the status on that, and what is the state college's uh, position on that bill? Well, that bill became very important to us because what was included in that was Senate Bill 850, which many may remember me talking about. When that bill was revised, 850, it would limit our ability to offer baccalaureate degree programs and cause us to have to change our name. Which uh, was led by, you know, some in the in the legislature, but then the, the, there was some revision, mm -hmm. uh, cooler heads prevailed, however you want to look at it, and, and there was a, a great deal of change to that bill. So yes. where does that stand at this point? Well, I need to thank everybody, first off, in, in Manatee and Sarasota County who wrote letters on our behalf um, asking for support of our position, which was to kind of back off a little bit on this this cap because what's very important to us is we want to be able to be responsive to the needs of employers in our community. Exactly. And if our if, if Sharon Hillstrom and the EDC is trying to bring an organization to our community or company in our community and they need graduates with certain skill set I don't want to be in a position where I have to say I can't help you because I met my cap. Right. I've only I, I, I've only I've already uh, graduated X number of, of people. We can't do anything more. Right, and, so. and that to me, and you know, it seems a little short-sighted, you know, to say I, you know, we're, we're putting caps on the number of graduates that we have and the number of degrees. So that's kind of changed. That well, th that um, will allow for limited growth over the next three years, and then it will sunset mm -hmm. at the end of three years in this. A compromise that we made. The compromise also allows us to keep our names and and while I know that many institutions when the names change they happen very quickly and maybe not without a little bit of controversy, State College of Florida it's been our name now for six years and it's been our brand for six years and, and quite honestly students like this name and um, it would be quite pricey to go Absolutely. back and try to rebrand yourself and change everything where that name is is <clears throat> representative so we're very glad that that went away in this compromise so the compromise is in bill 948 mm -hmm. but with the early departure of the of the house and then the senate ending their term when they come back they'll be strictly focused on budget items and this particular bill we believe is probably not going to go through mm -hmm. which begs the question where do we start this conversation next year because we believe that that those folks who who believe that this type of limit should be put will will want to continue the conversation next year and, and next year as well <coughs> if, if, if I am I'm correct and uh, the the session starts a little earlier it starts mm -hmm. in January instead of you know, so you know there's a very short time period for this to kind of evolve again and, and I think you're correct in the assumption is that because of the emphasis that's going to be on health care as they come back any other bill that comes there is going to take away from that discussion so really don't know where that's going to stand we don't know where that's going to stand but right now we're assuming that this Bill 948 is, is dead for now. Mm -hmm. But and, we'll watch and see and what you, happens. You, you had tremendous support from both uh, from, from throughout the community to say, you know, from both the county commission and you know business leaders and and, and people throughout the community that said, wait a minute, not so fast. You know, this is a, a significant uh, stipulation that you're trying to place on a very successful program and a very successful school. So, you know, we need to keep an eye on that, but at the same time, you know, we're, we're saying that this, because of the legislative decisions, may not see the light of day. Right. So we'll hope on that. But one of the key things that is going to be moving up is performance funding. And first of all, tell us about that and why that's such a critical issue for the State College. 
Well, you know, if you if you can't tell by everything we talked about up to this point, <laughs> I'm all about performance, and, and uh, you know, I'm not afraid to rise to to a challenge. And I think performance funding is is a is a good thing, and we embrace the idea of of measuring. Um, performance and measuring student success and, and all the things that are part and parcel to that. I have a couple of things I'd like to see as this evolves. Um, one is there are no measures of quality. So my 100% pass rate on 100% of my health sciences exactly. programs isn't accounted for or isn't giving, given any weight in this performance funding scenario. Um, so I think there are things that can be done to improve it. Um, but you know, I mean, in general, we're anxious to be part of this, but and I think also things that people need to understand, we have 28 state colleges in the state of Florida. Mm -hmm. Whatever college, when they get done ranking everybody, comes in at 28, is still in the top 100 in the nation. There you go. So we have the first and foremost system in the country. So I, I just hope that the well, viewing public understands that even though you might be 28, although I don't believe that's where we'll be, but whoever is 28 out of 28 in the state of Florida is still in the top 100 in the nation, and we can't lose sight of that. And, and that's a significant fact for the community and legislators to understand is that the college system uh, throughout the state of Florida is very successful and, you know, dedicated, you know, to providing the best education possible. And as you said before, you know, whatever measures are used for performance funding, I think the state college of Florida is, is, is well out in the front and, and, and it continued to be. But you know, those, that's something to be uh, uh, cognizant of as you move forward. But one of the things that I'd like for you to take a few minutes if you can is, uh, is on equity funding. You know, one of the key things, and I think you've spoken about this before in, in previous uh, programs, is the importance for a new library and the growth of the new library and, and the design and implementation of that. And uh, you've received some fu funding for mm -hmm. design and, and work, but you, know, you need to move forward on that. And why is that equity funding Im important as you move forward? Well, there are two issues specific to the State College of Florida that we have been working on legislatively. One is the equity funding that you mentioned, and that is when we compare our college to other colleges that are like us in size and in program mix, we're funded about a third less. So one, we're being very, very successful with our taxpayers' dollars. Exactly. But on the other hand, our students in deserve the same opportunities that other institutions can provide that are of our same size and same program mix. And so we're, we're fighting to make sure that we can bring those resources to our, to our state college, not unlike what happened with the technical schools a few exactly. years back when right. that equalization came into play. So we're anxiously looking forward to see how that's going to play out this year because it is a budget item. It will come up for discussion exactly. when the legislature comes back in June. The second is our Library and Learning Center. This is, is very exciting. It's been a long time coming. It's been our number one project since 2007. So it's we've been working on this for a long time. Mm -hmm. We did receive our first installment. I think it was $8.9 million last year. Or I'm sorry, $8.6 million last year toward... Um, our new library and learning center, and we've begun the planning. Mm -hmm. So it's it's you know that's when it gets exciting when yes, you start when to be able to it. involve students and faculty and staff and envisioning what that new library is going to look like. So we're looking for our remaining 8.9 million dollars this year, so we can actually put a shovel in the ground and start exactly. moving dirt and bring that to to life. Nothing creates excitement on a college campus like a new building being built. We just opened a new building this academic year that just ended, mm -hmm. the new nine, which replaced the oldest, one of the oldest buildings on right. campus. Um, so it was fun in the first day of school to have students show up and <laughs> a building that was brand there when they left last year was gone and there's a brand new building sitting in its place. So well, one of the exciting. key things, and I think this community recognizes, is that you know the infrastructure and the, and the campuses themselves, you know, the Bradenton, the Venice, and, and, and the Lakewood Ranch Camp are beautiful campuses. You know, they really have that kind of infrastructure and environment, you know, that, that is very welcoming. You know, modern facilities, uh, um, with a, a lot of modern equipment and, and, and things. so that's very important to have that kind of infrastructure uh, in place. You know, that, it just creates that environment for for better learning. 
Well, what we know is that when you have an environment in a library and learning center that is conducive of students coming and using that facility, mm -hmm. that it will improve retention rates, it improves graduation rates, it improves time to graduation, how much time it takes students to complete, and success rates in, in their classes. So this is going to be an important aspect for us, um, even though already our utilization of our library because of the incredible um, folks who work in the library, not right. because the, the facility necessarily supports it, <laughs> but uh, because of their work, we have one of the highest utilization rates in the state for that's, our library resources. And, and I think that's an amazing type of uh, you know, uh, facts and figures to have available. It just shows that you know that not only do you have the staff and faculty to support it, but the, the, at that what a valuable resource that library is, mm -hmm. and with a newer, expanded, modern type of library, of how that could be expanded. Yeah. Just imagine what we can do when we have that kind of a facility when we already have such successful staff. And, and I think you know the, the role of libraries is changing you know throughout the the country and the, and the nation it's changing and I think you know the vision for a library that's open and accessible uh, to students is, is going to be because your students you know they work uh, they have full-time jobs you know they do things so to have an accessible library available to them is, is going to be an important thing a modern and uh, uh, state-of-the-art facility. Well we know students learn in different ways you, know, you think back I reflect back on the library when I was a student and you had your little study carols and you might have one study room you could let them know months in advance you wanted to use for something. But students learn in different ways and we know we have to create different types of learning spaces for those types of interactive learning to go on. We also know that when students are taking courses online, typically they're taking that course from a library or a student union mm -hmm. or a, in, in a space where they're selecting who they want their classmates to be and then taking that class together. So Which, it's a different, a whole different way of looking at how we deliver education and obviously the Learning Center is key to that. And, and I think that's another thing that the State College is doing. You're always looking for those innovative uh, and, and initiatives that you know, can provide a, a greater opportunity for students, whether it's online or in the classroom or, or, or wherever that may be, is to provide that opportunity for the student. And that's your driving purpose. And I, I think that's to be recognized. So as you move into the funding period, you know, you're looking for equity funding uh, kind of to be you know, considered as well as for the uh, appropriations for the library. So those are two of the critical issues that you're looking for in this legislative session. So hopefully when they come back, they'll have time you know, to consider all of these things as you move forward. Well, we're not wasting any time. We're making sure we meet with all of our local delegation while they're home before they go back just to remind them <laughs> what, what are those important um, issues to the State College of Florida. And, and I think, you know, with the legislative delegation that Manatee County has, you know, you, re, you have very receptive people open to that. Very you know, lucky. Senator Galvano, a big proponent of education and a graduate of uh, the State College when he was MJC, I yep. believe, or Manatee Community College, Manatee Community but College. also throughout the uh, other parts of the delegation, uh, and I think it's due to your efforts, you know, to be outreach in the community, is that they're probably very receptive to 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 your request. Well, both of our alums, uh, Senator Galvano and Representative Boyd, have been to the college, have seen the library, they remember it from when they were at the college, mm -hmm. and you know, they've been very supportive in this effort and we'll, we'll see what happens this year. We well, hope we'll we keep can bring our, it home. We'll, and we'll keep tuned to that as we move into the you know, into the June session. But one of the things, I, if I may... Well, and if I, I mention oh, one thing, since Dr. we're talking about Representative Boyd, as a, a graduate of our institution, he's going to be our graduation speaker in December. Oh. We're looking forward to having him address our students and as a role model of, of how successful um, many of our alums are. I'm very happy to have him there. Well, we're given the opportunity to have, uh, to have uh, uh, interviewed uh, Representative Boyd. You know, he's very insightful, and he'll have a lot to say. And you know, you couldn't ask for a better representative from the college than Representative Boyd. But one of the things I'd like to take a few minutes, if, if I may, is that you know, you're very proactive in in in, in identifying uh, programs uh, that are. Uh, instrumental for student success and you're really looking at new programs and new degrees uh, that students uh, can have available starting this year and I'd like to take a few minutes if we may and talk about what those programs how you came up with those programs and how important they are and one of the, the key things that I saw 
And, and you recently hosted a program with uh, Brandon Harold at, at, at the State College on cybersecurity, but you're going to be offering an AS degree in network systems technology, which is cybersecurity thing. Why did you identify this as, as a critical uh, degree area? And, and tell us a little bit about that program. Sure. Well, one of the things that is important to the State College of Florida is that we are being responsive to the needs of our local community. And we've always had outstanding advisory committee members who have worked with our various programs. Mm -hmm. well, this year we're trying to, or recently we're trying to turn that around a little bit and we're some more actively going out and seeking out employers to say what are you looking for, what mm. do you need, what's missing, what are the gaps that you need filled in terms of anticipate? graduates. Yeah, right? I mean, what are you that's anticipating? A great idea. And then once we identify something, starting from the very beginning working with those employers to develop curriculum. So we make sure when those graduates are are completed or have completed their program that they have the skills that these employers are working for, looking for. And that's where the sort of the genesis of cybersecurity. <clears throat> Actually all of the programs we're going to talk about started with a conversation with employers who are looking for graduates with specific skills. And, and I think that's a remarkable thing and you know and, and I, I was so impressed with the uh, discussion that you led for cybersecurity and your staff and faculty that that participated you know it's such a critical field and to be able to offer that at this point uh, for, for for your students is just a wonderful achievement. Well in cybersecurity in particular this is sort of a whole new realm of criminal now the cyber criminal mm. who um, will exploit our data every opportunity that they can and so to be able to protect ourselves from that as individuals but as, as organizations. Mm -hmm. I think in that in that um, presentation that we did we talked a little bit about how many attacks we have on our system Daily. at the State College of Florida every day. It's, it's, it's just nonstop and it happens in everybody's home as well. So mm -hmm. to be able to protect, you know, people are entrusting us with important information about themselves and it's incumbent upon us to make sure that we're taking care of that as, as well as we possibly can and it's employers everywhere have the same issue that they're dealing with. But one of the things that, that I notice is, you know, I look to these different degrees, I mean these are like workforce driven type of, mm -hmm. of things for for uh, private employers for government these are the type of, uh, of of degrees that those employers are looking for and one of those is uh, in insurance services and risk management uh, you know so I'm sure that you know you people came to you yes. and said you know Dr. Prosfield you know the insurance industry is looking for these type of people we need to develop that kind of workforce and, and this insurance program obviously is it fills that critical need. Well, and with all of these employers that, that we've been t talking to about developing these programs, it's important that we have internships. Mm -hmm. So students, while they're going through the program, have the opportunity, you know, that hands-on learning is, is invaluable, and then that they're going to get a job when they graduate. So I know we're, we tell our employers, we will develop curriculum with you, we will develop programs in conjunction with you, but what we need from you is we need these internships and we need you to have a, a steady stream of hiring of our graduates. Which so I it's, think it's is good match. Which I think is important, you know, not only does the college providing that, you know, those resources and that degree, but also you're following up on that and working with the employer so when you finish that degree, there's opportunities that will be available to you and that if you match that with an intern program or a, 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 a shadowing program, so that student has opportunities when they graduate which I think is important. Uh, risk management, another one which I thought was a really great program, and I, I see this developing throughout the country, is you're looking for a certificate in entrepreneurship. And why was that important to develop that program? Well, we have a two-year AS degree in entrepreneurship, but the certificate was important because what we were trying to do was reach out to those small business owners who maybe they have their own plumbing <coughs> business or maybe they're a plumber and they want to start their own business mm -hmm. and we want to help them understand how to do that, how to develop the business plan, how to develop a marketing plan, exactly. all of those pieces and parts that go into place to creating their own business. Mm -hmm. So that's who that's targeted um, toward and we're really looking forward to seeing how we might be able to help transition some people into a new 
a new and experimental entrepreneurial career. And, and I think that's important too because you're you're outreaching to perhaps the non-traditional student, mm -hmm. you know, perhaps that person that it's already underway and has a, has a business, but wants to learn more and you're creating that opportunity for them. But also you're offering an AS in technology project management, in database uh, administration. Those are kind of critical things in this uh, uh, digital age to be able to provide. And I think within the college itself, you already have a very successful uh, uh, computer science program. We do, and, and I keep hearing again and again and again about we need more technology majors. We, but well, you have to drill down. What do you really mean? What, what right. are the skill sets that we're really looking for? And so once we've had that opportunity to talk again to employers and identify needs, it's that project management skill. It's the um, database administration, and then also application development. So the mobile application in particular, exactly. rapid, rapid mobile application development is very important. So that's one of the other programs that we're going to start as well. It's very exciting as you look at some of these programs that you're developing. I mean, it has to create kind of an excitement on campus as well within your staff and faculty to see, yeah, we want to develop, we want to you know, continue to grow and nurture uh, programs that will attract uh, the students uh, to the college. Well, you know, I think sometimes faculty get a, a bad rap and people think, oh, they teach and they teach the same thing over and over again. It's this really cushy, easy job. Mm. Faculty are smart. <laughs> They're brilliant. They're the smartest amongst us. They like to be challenged. They like to create new things. Mm -hmm. They're very entrepreneurial. Um, we just need to give them the liberty to do it. To and so I think that when we have the opportunity to create new programs, this. The, the, this is right in their, in their bailiwick and what they love to do. And it's very exciting, too, to see the diversity of the programs that you're going to have available. You know, web, uh, I think you were talking about the web development for mobile devices, but also you're talking about health services uh, uh, management, which is an exciting field, mm -hmm. but also a certificate in live event media production, too, which is kind of an exciting thing for, uh, for you to provide. Yeah. Across the board, the college continues to look at new and innovative things to reach out to the community, working with business, working with industry, working with employers to try to find that right fit and being open to them, but at the same time providing that backbone of services and, and degrees that are going to fulfill those students' aspirations. Well, I think it's important not to leave out our educational partners. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we are always working with our very close partner, the University of South Florida, Sarasota Manatee, on how do we, you know, these are all two-year programs we're talking about. Mm -hmm. How do we create that next two years in partnership exactly. with them or with another institution um, to have the um, pathways for students to go all the way through and get that baccalaureate degree and beyond if they want to in this area. So that is key to us, those partnerships with our educational partners as well. And, and you know, you've really been instrumental in, 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 in kind of uh, cementing and moving forward that two plus two type of thing and partnering with the uh, USF and other partners as well, you know, because I think the driving force here is what's beneficial for those students and how best exactly. can we serve their interests. Now, um, Unfortunately, Dr. Prosil, we're kind of running down on time a little bit, and I want to talk a, a few moments with you about what you think the, that the State College of Florida means to this community and what it brings to this community. Um, as I said before, your, your community involvement is uh, really second to none. You're, you're available uh, at, at all levels to talk to people about not only about the college, but about how the college can help this community. Why do you think that people, you know, look at the State College and say, what a great asset this is? Well, I think first and foremost, as an institution, we, we are the community. Everything about us represents this community. What we want to do in terms of creating workforce programs, what we want to do for, for people who live in this community that want an education, whether it's to start here and move on or to um, start here and find the rest of that experience in this local area, we want to be part of that and we want to help them. I don't see any difference between Manatee, Sarasota County, and the State right. College of Florida. We're right. just as much a part of this community as any other piece or part that, that creates this outstanding area that we have the fortunate experience to, to live and work in. Um, I think what we bring as a partner, though, is that we want to bring the open-mindedness that 
wherever anybody sees the opportunity for an educational partnership to mm. exist, we want to be at the table. We want to have that conversation. We want to be as flexible and as responsive as we can because when the whole community thrives and is successful, then we've accomplished our job. And we, like I said, we just want to be part of, of every conversation that's taking place where we can be an asset. For example, I know that the, um, the rowing uh, championship is coming mm -hmm. here and there is going to be a need for uh, various languages and interpreters and guides exactly. and uh, a whole um, support network of behind the scenes types of activities that will have to take place and we want to be part of that. We have a hundred uh, different languages and, and nationalities and backgrounds that we can bring to bear with our student body that could be of help. So uh, well, and we're I here. Think, we're I think you're working in, on so many different different levels uh, of things. You know, from student ambassadors to student involvement, uh, community service, all of those type of things that the college uh, continues to do. And I think the community can count on the State College of Florida to be supportive of not only their interests but also you know where the what is important to the community as well. And I mentioned the Martin Luther King Day of Service, which you've taken the lead on for for you know the last several years now and continued success on that but I want to wrap up with a kind of a final thing as we started we started with the graduation and the graduation is such a rewarding thing and at the Van Wezel it was standing room only and you know as you kind of reflect on that and you see these students come by and you see and they're all different ages you know they're young people some are a little bit older the non-traditional student you know as the president of that college to see those people walk across the stage you know it's got to be such a proud moment for you to know that they've not only got the best education but a great opportunities coming from the state college so as you reflect on that what are your thoughts about you know the success that you continue to bring uh, to those students well I just want to provide that opportunity bigger and better every year to more and more students but standing on stage and, and watching the students walk across stage as they're making their way toward me and I get to look out in the audience and I can kind of pick out their families <laughs> from time to time but also f picking out the faculty and you know some of the students I know better than some of the others and and just the look of pride on their faculty members face as well it's 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 just a culmination of hard work and care and um, everything that we do wrapped up into one, and it's, it's the whole family. It's the student's family, it's the college family, it's the board of trustees, it's everybody together celebrating what we're really here for at one time, and it just doesn't get any better than that. It, it doesn't. And again, Dr. Prosville, I want to thank you for taking the time out from what I know is a very busy schedule for you uh, to take these few minutes to talk about not only the continued success, but also the vision that you have for the State College of Florida. The success that the college has, a great deal of it in this community, you know, your leadership and your vision has really made that happen. So again, you know, uh, congratulations on a great job, well done, and we'd love to have you back to talk about maybe after the session's <laughs> over, uh, to see how things have, have have changed and will change. But you know, the college continues to be a major pillar in this community, and, and your leadership has continued to provide that. So again, thank you, thank you very much for being here. Thank you, it's a pleasure, and I, I look forward to coming back and talking to you again, and I think we will always have interesting, fascinating, and very successful things to talk about. I, I think you're gonna have <laughs> continued success at the college, and, the, and you know whether it's the Brain Bowl, or, or the Model UN, or many of the programs that you have, the, the college is always gonna have continued success. And I wanna thank you for joining us on this special edition of SCF in Studio.